we have Paladin today here. Number one Ryu in the US, maybe in the world. How's it going, Paladin? Good to have you here. Yo, how are you doing? And what's up, chat? How are you guys doing too? So yeah, Paladin, what are we gonna do today? We're going to hop into the two-player training room and go over some meaties and overall tech that I've found. I, I also have one bit of tech relating to Ryu's target combo that changes him as a character. Like the medium punch target combo or the heavy? The heavy punch. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, let's go. Let's, uh, let's see what Paladin has to offer. Like, just so you guys know a little bit of history, Paladin is absolutely insane with Ryu since day one, since before day one, since the beta, okay? And uh, this is the second time we're actually doing a stream together, and I got absolutely destroyed last time around. So I hope today, <laughs> after showing the tech that Paladin prepared for us, kindly prepared for us, I hope it's not going to look as embarrassing this time around. <laughs> That's my goal. Subscribe to Paladin's YouTube. I'm sure there's going to be crazy stuff going on in the future um, and today already. And on Twitch, the same thing. Follow him. Please, please do that. He did all the work. I legit am not doing anything. Absolutely lazy mode for me today. All the tech is from Paladin himself. So yeah, let's go. What's the first thing let's I want to show? Yeah, what do we... I Let's go over a couple of meaties in the corner. Meaty fireballs specifically that beat wake up level one supers. So for Ryu, you have, or as a Ryu player, you have medium kick Tatsu and a, an immediate light fireball. This is one of the easiest ones. And it's also plus on block. So if you were to block it, you should turn on the frame meter. You oh, can yeah. continue your offense. Okay. Yeah. So on hit, you can combo, and on block, you're still plus three. But I mean, I'm gonna block the next time around. I'll do it again. Alright, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't challenge. <laughs> yeah, you didn't challenge. Actually, let's not challenge. Like, let's just see the, the, the plus three. Right, I'm not gonna press a button. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, plus three. So this is actually a really important sequence that I finally learned like a couple of weeks back as well. Finally incorporated that into my gameplay. Very important tech. And the cool thing, as you said yourself, this is one of the easier setups because you can use the recovery of the Tatsu uh, to get the, the timing down for the light fireball. Definitely. Try to do a wake up level one super. Okay. <laughs> Uh, never <laughs> I believe it, it might be dependent on the character. For example, Kimberly has a slower one, and some characters, their level 1 super moves them a bit forward. So some setups, they're going to beat level 1 super flat out, and some setups, they may not. Yeah, I noticed Ken. Ah, that interesting. Does not. I do have many that do, that I will demonstrate. Okay, so, I, know, I know Ken, for example, can go through the setup as well. So that's a bit of a bummer. But yeah. Definitely. Another one will be medium donkey kick and then frame kill light kick into light fireball. So this one is going to be also plus on block. Yeah, the same the same rule of depending on their level one super, it will beat it. Okay. So that was my I'm miss timing it. I'm missing yeah, yeah. it. I'm Oh my bad. That but one. that was that was yeah, plus six, so that was definitely yeah. meaty. Yeah, yeah. Very. Plus so there one. I believe plus I can get that plus two. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You could try again, then... but uh, I think I think uh, earlier when when I let myself get hit, that the plus six that would have been a plus two on block. Um. So uh, that one is slightly more difficult though because you have to get the the light kick down, and right after the light kick, you have to fireball. Like, I actually know a setup like that myself after a light DP, like after, uh, like, uh, maybe I, like, I'm, I'm showing the tech now. Let's go. go ahead. Maybe, maybe, maybe you want to share this, but recently, I'm, I'm not even sure who did it, but maybe it was you? No, I don't know. Like, somebody showed me that you can do like the classic heavy donkey kick into light DP, and then you can whiff a crouching light punch into a light fireball. It's going to be plus three as well. Wait a second. Oh my bad, I missed it. No worries. Yep. So, I yeah. didn't 
lock it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that was plus seven. Meeting. Plus seven, that's the best that you can get in that spot. So yeah, this is a setup as well. Uh, what's really interesting though is if you do the same thing from like a light DP, like a raw one like this, it will not work. Yes, that's true. It only works in that juggle. Yeah, so you need to keep that in mind. Like you need to have the donkey kick juggle. Only then will this setup work. Okay, we can uh, continue. Yeah, definitely. So. On the same topic of that meaty uh, fireball, if you whiff light kick for that frame kill that you just talked about, then it will beat level one supers regardless of the forward momentum. So go ahead and wake up level one after okay. I do the combo. <laughs> As you can see, I'm plus 10, meaning that I can combo into a stand heavy punch. Oh, but, but 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 take a look at that. You were plus seven this entire time. So how did you make it work that this time around the forward momentum is not gonna... Like, why does that work? That one works specifically because the light kick is a different type of frame kill. If you look at the frame meter, you can see that crouch light punch is 14 and crouch light kick is 16. So that yeah. two frame difference allows it to beat level one supers consistently. Yeah, but you're plus seven this, like... You're plus seven on hit, mm -hmm. on the setup. Shouldn't the you have lost like two frames? Mm -hmm. The difference between it is the punish counter for the hit advantage. Because oh. I'm stopping your level one super, it oh. lands as a punish counter. Yeah, 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 that was punish counter. Okay, 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 get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another piece of tech is meaty stand medium punch after that same combo. So the frame kill looks like this. Yeah, that's the one that I actually use as well. That's a really it's, good one. And actually, I'm not sure if you're you were the one showing me this or if it was Halibel. I think you're actually the first one to show this. And then for some reason, I saw Halibel. He doesn't even play Ryu. Uh, he was the one doing the combo as well. And I was like, why why would he know? <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is one of the best setups for sure. If you want to land a medium punch, it's really, really good. Semi uses this very effectively. It's quite annoying because after the medium punch, you can actually go for a throw and it's not going to be interruptible by any four frame move. Yeah, I actually learned this tech from a Japanese or Korean player, I don't know, called Sekigan Ryu. I go to his streams and he has a translator. So we talk about tech and anytime I go to his stream, I'm like, have you found anything new? And he showed me that. It's really Another... interesting. Wait, so Semi learned this from you? Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure who came up with what at that point, right? Like, I've seen this uh, setup from... I I've seen, like, the medium punch tech specifically being super annoying from Semi. Because, like, he would actually... Like, somewhat early on in... Like, after the release, like... Semi would show that, like, I cannot jab him after the blocking the medium punch. And I was so confused about that. Like, he would just come up to me and throw me. Yeah, that tick throw is also an important aspect of it. Block. Let's demonstrate it for the viewers. Yeah, Block, sure. And then jab. So I can see how I'm going yeah. to be able to... Yeah, okay. hit you with yeah. the throw. Okay. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> my bad. No worries. Yeah, that worked. You see that? I tried to jab that. And it just didn't work completely beat it out. Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. Another plus two situation that I actually discovered is that you can frame kill after a medium donkey kick for the same setup. As you can see, that was also plus 10. So the same rule applies, that it will beat out four frame normals. That one what? I've been using very recently. <clears throat> it's, it's extremely, extremely useful. My question would be, like, in what situation would you be, like, would you do, like, a donkey kick, a medium donkey kick? How would you land that, usually? Like, in order to, for this setup to even apply, you know? Because, like, is it is it worth it to sacrifice the damage from... Actually, if I'm far away, I can only get 1,400 through the DP. Ah, oh, that's quite interesting, actually. If I'm too far away, the heavy DP does not actually work. 
so I don't even get the, the um, it's actually quite risky. Donkey kick. Huh. It's more consistent. Yeah, it's more consistent, and then you get the setup. That's good. Yeah, so there are, there are times where you will do a combo and the heavy DP will whiff completely. The medium donkey kick is super important because it's consistent. So yeah. if we were to backdash and then shimmy, our medium donkey kick would work super consistently. Or if we were going to micro walk backwards and then go for a button like crouch medium punch, which is what I do, I, medium donkey kick would be extra viable. So, so you, you actually hit confirm like, like you you if you're trying to shimmy someone in the corner and you see this, you will go mm -hmm. for crouching medium punch into donkey kick. Yes. Okay. Because some sometimes I I notice that I'm being a bit too greedy. Like like um, if I do a shimmy, I have the habit sometimes of trying to do a fierce, and then if they don't actually tech, but instead they jump forward, they, they will actually punish counter my standing fierce. Mm -hmm. So, so I think I should learn this as well, like just choosing a safer option with a crouching medium punch. Because if they jump, it, this should whiff, and then I can uh, still uh, cross cut my opponent. So the, the crouch, crouching medium punch is 22 frames total. This is 32. Like I lose 10 frames just by using the standing fears. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, Crouch Medium Punch is the go-to shimmy tool in this game. For real. Another... What, what, what do you think of Crouch and Medium Kick? I prefer not to use Crouch Medium Kick because its recovery is a lot higher. For example, this is 22 frames and the Crouch Medium Kick is 29. You are absolutely right. So that is right. a 7 frame difference. Yeah, that's a great point to make. Yeah. It also yeah. does less damage. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Also, actually, like, let me see. This does 1,380. Yeah, like the scaling is uh, different. 80% on the crouching medium kick, 100% on the crouching medium punch. Always, like, like, I always have to remember, whenever you do anything with crouching medium kick, it's gonna scale a lot worse. Okay. Yeah, great yeah, information yeah. right there. Okay, so what's next? The next tech will be one that is prop the one that's probably going to be the biggest out of this entire stream or the most important. It is that if you were to block this target combo right here, standing, that you would lose a ton of drive gauge and it would be harder for you to punish me than if I had done a donkey kick. So that's just like a bit of a reference. But to demonstrate it, go ahead and walk back while you're cornered. Okay. You see, I'm minus eight in very far space, and let's do that again. Take a look at the drive gauge chip. Oh, wow. Another part of it is that if you were to try and crouch the heavy kick, but you have stand block heavy punch, then it will jail your stance. For example, I want you to walk back, and then after you stand block the heavy yeah. punch, Try to crouch. Okay. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Actually, I am crouching, but I still have to block the hard kick. Interesting. Do you see that? Like, it lets me crouch, but I will still get hit. Interesting. Yeah. So, if you are, let's say, doing offense, come to, like, the center of the stage. Let's say I'm doing, like, a light string, and you're walking back. I could punish you with or I can punish your drive gauge by doing this. So, bam, bam, and then try to walk back. Uh, okay, a, okay. A, good, a good way for me to set it up is if I actually knock you down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like, this is extremely difficult to punish. Like, I would have to... Can I, can I level one super even? I believe not. But it was not reversal. So... Not quite Let's sure. Maybe, maybe I messed it up. Let's try that again. I'm really curious what my options are. No, I missed, missed yeah, it. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, I keep missing it. I don't think you're missing it. I've actually tested it with uh, the training room dummy. So a lot of characters actually can't do anything about this at all. So 
Let's let's try that again. Okay. Ah, keep on <laughs> messing it up. I keep on messing it up. That was a reversal, and it did punish. It did punish, but only because I I think I walked back really late. Let's try that again. Yeah, you're right. So the, this will definitely... The only time it will not work is if you do the hard combos from like super close, you know? Yep. And then, and then okay, it's punishable. But even then, the opponent has to spend level 1 super. That's not like an amazing punish opportunity, you know? Definitely. And also, it's hard to level 1 super punish it too. Yeah, you have to like, even like I, I was trying to react to it. This is not something you'll you'll be expecting, you know? You're not expecting the hard kick in that spot. So being ready with the level 1 is difficult anyway. So the next piece of tech that I have is just a ton of perfect parry trap situations. Let's get you into the corner and go ahead and crouch block. And I'll just demonstrate that I am minus 2 on my sand heavy punch. This means that my opponent is likely to challenge if they see that like I'm not doing a fireball. For reference, yeah. a fireball there would be punishable, so this is realistic, that I'm yeah. minus. Mm -hmm. A very strong strategy is to immediately tap your parry there, so that if your opponent were to try and jab you, you would perfect parry it. So block the heavy punch, Jimmy, and try to jab me back and take your turn. Yeah. Damn. Getting wrecked immediately. <laughs> nice, there nice. Are, there are many situations like this and many different conversions that we can get. Mm -hmm. Let's go mid-stage, and I'm going to perform the same trap, but afterwards I'm going to do something a bit unique. So, go ahead and try to reversal jab. Reversal jab, okay. Yeah. Oh! Oh! I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's an amazing that's an amazing one. Okay, that's great because like doing a setup, especially one that doesn't require you to spend a lot of drive gauge and, and anything really, um, that's really good because the combo is not going to do any damage anyways, right? So ah, that's an interesting cross up setup. Let's do that again. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So if I perfect parry the jump in, I like I'm only plus two, right? I cannot punish it. Yes. Okay. It is a safe jump. Yeah. What if, if they back if you, rise? If you back rise, it should give it me will the same. still work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, am I crazy to think like back rise in Street Fighter Six does not actually take longer, right? Or does yes. it? Yes. The quick rise and back rise have the exact same frame data. Yeah, right? It's just a little bit further away, so then it's not going to be a cross-up probably. But let's try it out. Do the same setup again. There you so, yeah. so yeah, it's not going to be a cross-up, but yeah, it won't matter if it's... I mean, one thing that you have to keep in mind is like your opponent controls what side you're going to be landing on. That can be important, but overall, this is an interesting way to get a... and a rare one, by the way, a rare situation to get a safe jump from a, um, like, mid-screen. In the corner, there are so many ways to do it, but mid-screen is actually not that easy to do. Definitely. A bit of tech for a side swap that I have. Let's go to the corner, where I'm cornered, and I'm going to slide under you with a dry brush. Check that out. Okay. I've used this tech a lot, especially in tournament. It's super useful for stealing momentum back. For example, if I were like it, to get a counter hit jab and then combo into a medium punch, I could side swap very easily and steal a match. If I'm directly against the corner, I have something similar but not as powerful where I just hop over. I could be plus one right here. See? Okay. If you were to back rise, if you were to back rise, the Oki situation will be a bit different. 
So depending on how your opponent likes to rise, you're going to have to decide if you're going to do the drag rush under or if you're just going to plain hop over. Okay. Okay. So the hop over only works if you're re really close to the corner though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. You can actually get a dash here, so check check out. Oh yeah, I was plus 24, right? Yep. So yeah. Right for yourself. Oh nice, nice, that's good. So that's the next section of the tech is situations after a throw. Okay. So, for example, if I were to throw you mid-stage, I don't have true drive brush open. My opponent could, if they have a reversal, they could consistently EXDP me every time, regardless on if I try to end my drive rush early. So go ahead and demonstrate that by performing a reversal EXDP. Uh, no worries. Wait, wait, wait. You, can see, mm -hmm. you can back rise too, so that people can see a bit more clearly. Wow. It, yeah. That's actually specific to Ryu. I forgot about that. Ryu's DP has a lot less distance than other characters, but characters like Kami, Ken, and Luke can consistently do that reversal. So that's just a Ryu specific thing. But the okay. main idea is that if I want to my, continue my offense, it's typically fake. So how can we get offense solidly? Characters like Ken that have a reversal EXCP try to get through fireballs. It's like a bit of an off note. And th this setup right here is almost completely immune to Ken's reversal EXDP because it will actually, the fireball is so slow that it will catch it. So that, that's like, I kind of messed up the order there. This is the setup. If you back rise, I actually get a, another safe fireball. And if Ken were to try and EXDP through that, through the first one, there's a chance that he could actually get caught. He has to manually delay his EXDP to get through, and that's very difficult. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow, okay. That's really good. That's really good because one thing that I noticed in the corner, if you do a fireball setup, a meaty fireball setup, the strong players, they're actually able to react to it and then EXDP every time uh, they see you're doing the setup. Uh, but in mid screen, like that habit is actually going to backfire. That's good to know. Definitely. Another thing that we can do after a throw mid stage is walk up and then forward heavy kick. So this is typically for players that back rush. So go ahead and back rush. So. This uh -huh. is our best button to use after a throw because anything else can be interrupted by a light. So if you were to, let's say, try and catch me walking up with a light, my heavy kick will beat you up. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! I don't think it's a true like hop over the light, but the distance will allow it to win. Uh, that's really interesting. Like the light kick d did not catch you. I was not in rage for that. And the light, uh, that's really interesting. Oh. And medium is simply too slow to, to come out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've actually used this tech against high-level players, if I haven't mentioned that. This is the go-to button. Let's say a Ken is trying to EXDP through your fireball, and they have to hold forward, right? They have to hold forward to react to your fireball and EXDP to get around that, that fireball tech that I was just talking about, right? Yeah. The, what, what's going to make it harder for him to get that timing down is if you mix in the forward heavy kick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So alternating between the light fireball safe setup, if you were to jump in there, it's actually like a guaranteed second fireball. And, unless and I perfect pair. Yeah, unless you perfect pair. And then alternating with the forward heavy kick. That's Go ahead and try to, try to jump after you block that first light fireball. 
Oh. I can actually. Hey, hold up, hold up. I think I missed time. I think I missed time. <laughs> oh. I missed again. Hold up. Okay, that's. Crap, man. Honestly. But honestly, that yeah. looks like because Ryu's hard punch has such a good. Let me do that with hard kick. Just let me see if uh, if it's specific for Ryu. I feel like I've. I know I like this. I know I like this. I'm. I, I'm gonna need like ten seconds to think this through. This let Let's try. Let me, let me. Let me try to parry the fireball. Mm -hmm. Not perfect parry, just regular parry. Let's see if it makes a difference. There. Yeah. Try again with the heavy punch. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe no, I mistimed the counter. maybe I mistimed the the hard kick as well. Let me try the hard kick again. Oh I no. Oh, see that like it does change it up. The hard kick uh, again. Ah, oh, so right, stupid. Try again. Okay. Yeah, the hard kick, hard kick. It beats hard kick for some reason. But if I block, let me block again. Let, let me block again and do the hard kick. I mistimed it again, sorry. I'm using the frame meter to. Yeah. No, and I mistimed it. Yeah. The parry changes it. The parry changes it, yep. I mean, that's always gonna work, yeah. Yeah, the parry changes it. Interesting. All right, so that one, the, this disclaimer on that one, that tech did not, or it does not work. I didn't know the counter play, and you actually found it during this. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's good to know. It's good to know. Azrael on on Twitch asks why why does the pair change? It might be because of the pushback. Block this fireball, right? Lock oh fireball. no, no, it's because hey, no, this this is a great uh, comment. A stand says it's probably because the hurt box widens when I'm crouching. That's probably correct. But mm. I mean, let me try to walk back. Like, let me do a standing block. So let me do the crouching block first. Mm -hmm. I missed so, that. That was a frame up. So, but the crouching block was the one that worked, right? So let me stand block now. Uh, I can't. I can't. It's gonna. It's gonna move back. It's gonna okay, move backwards, right? Mm. Yeah, but the stand some. Block does change it. Yeah, it's probably the the stand block that's gonna change it. Um, so this makes the fireball land one frame later, which is just barely enough to recover from the jump in hard kick, but not early enough to recover from the hard punch. And it makes sense that when I set the dummy to actually do it, that that might have affected it because the dummy naturally sand blocks fireballs. Oh, interesting. The next bit of tech that I have is related to dry brushes. So a lot of players, they like to interrupt the dry brush with their crouch jab or crouch medium punch. I'm going to dry brush at you and interrupt me with your crouch medium. Okay. Okay. Why is that with you? Wow. <laughs> we should we should be you should actually be beating me flat out. Depends right, on. Yeah, it depends on the distance and the button yeah, that I yeah, use. Yeah, exactly. Um, and hop kick is very useful here because it's going to go over your crouch medium punch. Let's okay. try that again. I'm going to do this so the timing can be demonstrated. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. As you can see, that was a punish counter. Oh, wow. Try to jab it out, too. So what? this is very specific because characters that don't have a sand jab or a proper one, like loot, will struggle. For example, loot players will do like a jab to stuff your drive rush, not a stand one because the stand one doesn't have strong conversions. So they'll try to crouch jab and Ryu can hop over. Yeah. I'm not that good at coming to the no, like, you have to, You have to have like a specific distance, like if you're... 
<laughs> if you hit they're it, too close. yeah, yeah. If you're too close, then it just doesn't work. So you have to be a little bit further away. But it's quite interesting to um, should probably consider this too, especially for like sometimes I'm struggling against players who jab, as you said, and then I try to be greedy with the um, um, with my options, and then I get perfect parry. But if you do this, this comes out a lot later than like uh, a medium attack. So if they attempt to perfect parry, you're not going to get punished. Yeah, it's also zero on block. So ah, that's yeah, yeah then that's really good. Another one that's similar to that is Drive Rush Donkey Kick. So if you were, it, I think Donkey Kick is more consistent in catching, but it will, it's more unsafe on block. So try to interrupt me again. Donkey Kick actually works from a bit closer. Oh, nice. You know what I like to do? Mm. I like to do this. Mm. That's, that's good, actually that's, good. that's surprisingly annoying. You know, sometimes you know what? Like people will actually like you can do that super late, and what will happen in some cases? Like if you, like a lot of players will actually tech. Like if I if I drive rush in, like if you're not expecting the opponent to challenge with a button, I mean if they if like if you do it further away and they jab, they might actually get caught here. And if they tech, and this is something that I've noticed a lot, if they tech, they will actually get clipped by this. If like, you're attacking really early, but yeah, 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 that is the proper way. I did delay tech properly. Yeah, so. exactly, and. Uh, it's really annoying to deal with. <laughs> I really love this. Like, I just recently started doing that, and I was surprised. I was kind of shocked that this actually worked uh, quite well. Definitely. I... Um, another another one that I have is axe kick. Oh wow! Yeah, so... you find you found a way to use the axe kick. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Finally, there's a use. Finally! Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't help but laugh because this button is, is so useless in so many scenarios, you know? The reason why I like this axe kick drive rush is for like fireball drive rush because it's going to put me at a safe distance for my fireball. For example, if I did something like point blank, the fireballs are going to be consistently safe. So crouch block and then try to light kick me, okay? Mm -hmm. I will do like a jab there. But... There is a distance where that doesn't work. <laughs> Bro, why is like... Okay, hold up, hold up. There we oh. go. Oh. <laughs> at last, at last, it was safe. I need to be a bit more further than I had yeah, imagined. Yeah. But from, from up close, like this close, it's impressive that it's actually safe. Because if I were to do the exact same thing with a heavy punch, it's less likely to be safe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Seems like almost about the same. But also, there's the factor of it having two hits so if i were to do something like this and my opponent was like to perfect parry and try to punish me i could catch them with the axe kick with the first hit with the axe kick and if they do nothing then by the time they release their perfect parry they're going to block the axe kick and i cancel into a fireball which is going to ship at their drive kick so it's it's really complex but i, I really like to do this okay it's like first hit. It's like it's like you like yeah. you're really trying to be safe there, you know. That's like if you're. What if they if the opponent does? Is it even a strain from that range? Does it like can I interrupt it? Let's see. And with the drive impact, I think that's going to speed it out. Yeah, and this is something that I worry about a lot when I'm doing like. When I'm trying to be annoying um, for my opponent, when I do like solar plexus, for example, like what I, one thing that I sometimes do is like solar plexus and let's say they block, I just follow up with light kick fireball. And um, usually this is okay, but if they like, there are so many strings for Ryu that like if you have, a, if you develop a habit of always doing that, the opponent will start doing uh, do a um, a drive impact. Sometimes after the light kick as well, you know, because it's not going to be a string if you do a light fireball. Mm -hmm. So you can you can actually do a drive impact after the light uh, kick, 
So you have to be very careful with what string you want to go for. But yeah, so so the axe kick that kind of remind me of that, you know, like where you okay, uh, that can can be neat, but uh, at least it shouldn't be interruptible though, right? That should be a block string. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right, like if yeah. I land the second hit, if I land the second hit, right? That's how you did it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think like that is also like it happens a lot where you'll try and interrupt. Mm -hmm. So try, try that again. I, I made a mistake, but that's a little fact. So I was spamming jab during that second hit of action. Okay, let's try that again. Was yeah. Jab. yeah, yeah, you cannot interrupt that. So the moment you block the first attack, so you would have to do drive impact beforehand, which is actually very risky to do. Um, when you see green and you drive impact, that's risky because the opponent it gives the opponent a lot of time to react. Why not just do a heavy punch? People ask. Because of the first hit of the axe kick having the potential to also just straight up catch them. Also, for example, the heavy punch doesn't have the same sort of delay. For example, if I were to heavy punch and then delay, I'm going to be a lot closer. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a bit, a tiny bit harder to get my, to get a safe fireball from that distance. So for example, if I were to do this, it's difficult. If I want to delay, the delay is important, then it's going to be a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. The axe kick will have that delay inherently, and also it's going to be harder for them to interrupt. We need yeah. that delay because players will hold their drive parry for... Uh, parry, parry the fireball? Okay. okay. They'll hold their drive parry, and they'll parry the heavy punch. But the axe kick has this weird timing where they're likely to actually get hit by when yeah. they release their parry. So try that again, hold your parry, something like that. So it's a lot more guaranteed to get that drive gauge chip, where it sets up something alongside the heavy punch. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's actually also like a good option against characters you don't want to be close to, like Zangief, uh, where it guarantees a bit of distance afterwards. Definitely. Ah, it's interesting, it's interesting. All of these, by the way, like there's no, like one thing that you really have to understand is there's no perfect option. These are all possibilities that you can, that you have. These are all things that you can consider in your game plan. And one thing that I've learned, especially in Street Fighter 6, is you cannot have enough setups. Like the moment you show your opponent, if you do the perfect setup every time, like if you consider something optimal and you keep going for it, a strong player will always adapt to it and will show counterplay. Uh, I mean, perfect parry is the counterplay to um, to having well little setups. If you if you don't have enough setups, then the opponent will start um, well punishing you for them. So just mixing it up inherently creates value for you. And if it covers slightly different options, that's even better. You know, uh, just make sure like. Your timing is slightly different. The options that you choose forces the opponent to slightly different play. That's going to make it more difficult for your opponent to deal with it. <laughs> Thanks for that. That really clears stuff up for the viewers. Another yeah. part? Or uh, another one, one, one question, though, from, from oh. chat. As a Wraith One UK, I'm not sure if you're a, uh, like Paladin, if you're paying attention to chat right now, but Jimmy asked Paladin if you would like to see Ryu S or A tier next patch. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think that if the game sits in the way that it is right now, people will see, or like hypothetically, if the game stayed the same forever, people would slowly see that Ryu would move up to eight here. I think right now he's in a great spot. And a lot of this tech just hasn't been adapted into Ryu players yet. I haven't even been doing a lot of this tech. For example, the heavy punch block string one, the Jailing block string that I had found, that one completely changes Re. Characters like JP struggle to get that much drive gauge chip. I was talking with Todakai, which is one of the best JP players in his region, and finding like 
And, and he was demonstrating how JP's offensive pokes will chip the opponent. And he showed me like a little sequence and I told him, wow, Ryu can just do that, but a lot simpler. Just heavy punch, heavy kick. And, and also, go ahead and block Jimmy. Like stand block, walk back. Notice how this chips away 1.1 or 1.2 drive bars. That's actually a major difference in competitive play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think Ryu's definitely good now. And I, I think if he gets buffed even a little, he might end up in S tier. Ah, that's quite interesting. Quite, in quite interesting that you feel um, so strongly about him. I like. I have to say, when it comes to competitive play, to me also, it seems like there is so many decisions. There are so many decisions uh, to be made in a game that effectively it barely matters what character you play. The player with the most amount of experience and the, the best way to juggle their options is almost always gonna win. Like when I see like Paladin you or Ending Walker, the way like you guys play Ryu, I feel like it, it just makes Ryu look S tier to me. Like I was like, wow, that's so powerful, you know? And um, the, the like knowing how to deal with the game mechanics is much more important than the character like than the character choice itself and um that's quite interesting another little thing i can add to the sand heavy punch block string is that the counter play let's say if you know that i'm going for this a lot go ahead and walk back again uh if you know like i'm going for this a lot then you would start crouching right so now that you're crouching you're more likely to get walked up on so in the corner, it's not as good as an example. Go ahead and walk forward, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. But if you're crouching from here in neutral, that's a huge advantage for me to low forward fireball. That completely changes the landscape because now every time you walk back, you're risking losing a ton of drive gauge. Yeah, yeah. yeah Go ahead and walk back now for me. As you can see, that's a huge punish just for walking back. It's not a physical hit punish in terms of damage, but the drive gauge damage is big. Yeah, it's, uh, I actually was not aware of that. That's actually insane. And something that I've been very annoyed by myself, like opponents who just walk backwards, you know, like, okay, how do I deal with this? Do I just risk it and just go for the crouching medium kick into a Tatsu? But the hard punch option seems really viable. Definitely. For reference, for people that don't know why this is very big, if you were to block, just block. It will take me around five fireballs to get up around the same drive gauge chip. Unblock. One, two, three, four, five, as you can see, and then walk back to me. Yeah, it's the All same of that thing. in one go. That's crazy. That is absolutely huge knowledge right there. I'll I'll have I'll I'm gonna be using that. I'll I'll definitely, I'll definitely have to incorporate that. That's really important. It's yep. only about three more things to go over. <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go. Next part would be why medium fireball is one of the best neutral or the best fireball, in my opinion. This is something I haven't adapted. But for reference, the light fireball, its startup is 16 frames. So look at the frame meter. It only appears for like a little bit. It's 16 frame startup. That is humanly reactable, considering that the fireball has to travel and it's slow. That's the light fireball. And the heavy fireball has the risk of being very minus, or it's so minus and neutral that it's not practical most of the time. Mm -hmm. Close range heavy fireball is risky, so you end up having to mix in light fireball, which is risky to being jumped in on, and the heavy fireball, which on block is going to leave you minus. So then how do we get a good balance of both of these? And that is medium fireball. Medium fireball has 14 frames of startup, so it's a bit harder for them. And the speed is very good compared to the heavy. So I'll throw a heavy one from full screen. And this is a medium. The medium one is very similar. So heavy, medium. The medium one, it's what That's I'm trying to say is the fact that it's even hard to differentiate the speed yeah, yeah. between them is why medium is so good. Oh. It's also very hard for people to get that perfect parry timing down because they're most Ryu players from coming from five, they'll use light and heavies. 
So medium is also a bit safer to like perfect parry sweet because it's, you know, a great balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O overall, it's just the most solid in my opinion. So that's like a, a little fact, I guess. It's not necessarily tech, but it's knowledge going into fights. The next bit of tech is solar plexus to break armor. This is specific against Marissa, so it's a bit hard to show off. But against her Gladius, you can do Solar Plexus to uh, hit through her armor and then punish punish her. So that one I can't really show off right now unless I were to swap to Marissa. So let's do that. I'm going to swap to Marissa and let's hop back into the training room spot. One thing that against Marissa specifically that I find annoying is you can challenge her counter, like the one with like the armor, with overhead and solar plexus, but you have to have perfect timing on it. Like it has to, like the first hit has to land meaty in order to um. Mm. Seems like it breaks through it, and then the ex one is also very annoying. Uh, I Mm -hmm. No, 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 that does not work. That should not work. You should be able to punish me for this. Oh, like press up. Yeah, yeah. There, no, no. There's a button that I have to press there. I don't know what it is, so. Yeah. Like, I mean, after mm -hmm. the first hit connects, you can interrupt me before the second hit. What's the What's the button? Yeah, try to figure it out. The one that goes forward. Like. Yeah, it's like a little forward. I'll just check the command list really quick. Uh, like, what's like it seems automated by the the players like I don't think you have to press anything like because the opponent just will get it every time like what if you don't do anything just do the counter mm -hmm. yeah this mm, it is completely automated okay so if I do wow wait why does this work Oh. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not Maybe I've been <laughs> messing it up. Let, let me try solo plexus here. What? Have I just been messing it up? Like every single time I've been doing this, like there was like a big chance it would just fail. Like I would get hit after the first hit. You know? Mm -hmm. What if I do regular solo plexus? I'll do triple and then do it. Interesting. Can I super after a hard punch? Let me see. Let me do Probably, it Probably, but it's a very hard to yeah, let, let me let me yeah. try that. No, I don't think so. I missed it. Yeah. Oops. I don't think so. I think you'll interrupt me. Yeah, you'll interrupt me. Can That'd I do another? No. Let me try a different button, like light kick or so. <laughs> no, not like that. I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh, <Oops. shoot. laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not good at this, bro. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Probably that just interrupts ex1. it. Wait, that just one has low armor. Oh, wait, that is considered a low? Yep. Yeah, we'll wow, what? Okay, okay, let's try EX. Let me try that. The EX one will probably beat out Plexus too. Yeah, let, let's try the EX. Yeah, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Yeah, I'm messing up with your timing because of the drive rush. Yeah, see that? And I want to interrupt that. For that one, I will just throw them. They don't have throw invincibility. I don't necessarily have tech for that just yet. I'll have to lab it. Okay. For the other uses of Solar Plexus, it will be to beat the Gladius. Yeah. So go ahead and just break the armor, see? Yeah, that's really good. It works from really far away too. You can test out distances to demonstrate. 
Oh Take wow, it. that far. And you can combo into a crouch medium kit. Although, there goes the RMR. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hey, yeah, crouching. What's the frame date of this, like, on counter hit? Oh, wait a minute, we don't. Oh, I fucked it up, my bad. It, I think it turned off when we ended. Yeah, we tur it turned off, unfortunately. Let's check again. So, wait. Uh, did it show or was I blind? Let me see. Plus A. Okay. 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 I do this check a lot. This is nice. And Zangief's too. Okay, but you're you're just trying to harass them. Like you're just g purposely going close. And then if they do that, if you think they're going to, they're thinking about Gladius, you just solo flexes mm -hmm. them. Okay. And that's actually really good. That's really nice. You're right. Another piece of tech that I have, which is more Ryu specific that you're going to have to demonstrate, is just crouch medium punch's disjoint. Our crouch medium punch has a solid disjoint on it. So it's decent at beating out lights and there's a range that you can use it versus specific attacks that won't leave you open to trading just because of that destroy. It almost says priority over attacks. So I'm gonna be just mashing this and you'll see you're going to beat me every time you distance yourself properly like that. Not not in a million years I'm gonna be able to actually catch you. Not That's even a really good button. Yeah you're right. Cool thing is you can buffer drive rush cancel there as well. Mm -hmm. How was not close enough for that? For the back fears. Yep. But you and should probably not do the hard kick. The hard kick is risky because if you do a crouch attack and I happen to hit you, the hard kick is gonna whiff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah that's a confirm. Yeah, yeah, you have to hit confirm that. So that's actually all the tech that I have for today. Let's game. Let's go. You guys want to see a set, right? 